Well, thank you for joining us on this Good Friday as we remember the death of our Lord Jesus on the cross that provided a way for us to have life through him. We've created a a little more intimate setting here at church so Daryl and I can uh, feel together with you in your home as we share koinonia or fellowship around the table that Jesus invites us to share with him. We have our communion elements here, and I hope you have yours as well as we uh, remember the Lord Jesus together. You know, one of the names for the Lord's Supper is Eucharist, which means giving of thanks. So let's begin tonight with uh, a prayer of thanks. Father, how could we ever, ever, ever say thank you enough for the love you have shown us in giving to us a totally undeserving, sinful people, your perfect, beloved Son, to die in our place and for our sin. And Lord Jesus, how could we ever say or do, what could we ever say or do to express in any meaningful way our gratitude for all that you went through in your suffering and death to rescue us from the condemnation our sin deserved, to reconcile us to a relationship with God, and to receive us as your sons and daughters and give us life in you. There really are no words that are adequate to thank you, but we choose on this day to reverently remember and joyfully celebrate this holy day of all days in human history in honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. righteous frown Christ laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul Christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the lamb I will sing I will sing to God and to the lamb I will sing to God and to the lamb who is the great I am While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. Thank you, (laughs) Daryl. You know, as we journey with Jesus through the Passion Week, we see him presented as the king on Palm Sunday. And uh, then he cleanses the temple has increasing conflict with the religious leaders throughout that week until finally the plot to betray him and kill him was planned. But on Thursday evening, uh, Jesus spent time with his disciples in the upper room, which we will come back to in a few minutes. But after leaving that precious time, they walked out of Jerusalem, down the Kidron Valley, up onto the Mount of Olives to an olive garden, called Gethsemane, which means the olive press. Here, the greatest suffering of our Savior took place. It was not the physical suffering of hanging on a cross or the scourging or the beatings, but the spiritual suffering of aligning his human will with the divine plan of the Father to bear all of the sin of humankind 
and as a result be forsaken, at least for a time, by the Father on that cross who loved him. He was forsaken, so we wouldn't have to be. I'd like to read that account of um, Gethsemane tonight from Matthew chapter 26, um, beginning in verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. You know, uh, Gethsemane is such a powerful moment in the life and the suffering and the death of Jesus. I'm just curious where your thoughts go as you visualize uh, that moment. <laughs> Yeah, I think about um, his human aspect. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, he was uh, uh, dealing with the, the separation that was about to occur. And all he was asking was, can you stay awake mm -hmm. yeah. while I pray? And, yeah. um, and uh, it was obviously crushing for the human side of him, mm -hmm. knowing, looking also, even the God side of him of separation mm -hmm. yeah, from his father, um, from the father. And I just, the whole thing is this, when I look at that, is this back and forth between um, his divine appointment yeah, and the loss he was knowing that he was going to have. Yeah. That, and there's a mystery in that for me. I mean, I always, I watch the way how, you know, the triune God planned this from all eternity. And he obviously voluntarily came to fulfill this will. And yet that human side of him didn't want to have to face all that was involved. I mean, it was suffering. It was suffering on a scale we, we can know nothing of. And, and how he was bending the human side of his will, so to speak, to, to the divine plan. You know, if it be possible, you know. If it can't pass, your will be done. You know, those, right. those three prayers that, that you see him bending his will to the Father. And, and, and such, a, such a great thought for us when we go through suffering. I mean, there's mm -hmm. people suffering today. Yeah. Uh, but in the midst of that suffering, to be able to say, to look at the example of Jesus and say, you know, nevertheless, Lord, your will be done. I'm trusting in your will more than I'm trusting in my ability to avoid suffering. Right. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Uh, tonight, I came across a song, which I didn't realize until a few minutes ago, <laughs> that it was a poem, probably an old poem, yeah. and uh, which most of the, uh, many of the songs we sing in church and worship come from Scripture, come from, mm -hmm. from the Psalms, and uh, this is called Death Be Not Proud. Death be not proud, though the whole world fear you. Mighty and dreadful you may seem, but death be not proud, for your pride has failed you. You will not kill me, though you may dwell in plague and poison. You're a slave to fate and desperate. Sleep be the gates to heaven. 
why your confidence when you will be no more you will be no more when you will be no more even death will great words huh <laughs> well after Jesus betrayal and arrest in Gethsemane he was put on trial during the, that night and early morning you remember that Peter denied him just as the cock crowed just as Jesus predicted and all the other disciples abandoned him finally he was brought before Pilate and condemned to be crucified so I want to read uh, tonight from Mark chapter 15, an account of the crucifixion. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, you have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things, and Pilate again asked him, have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together... <laughs> a crown of thorns. <laughs> they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his, clo his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews... And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. 
Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour, 3 p.m., had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, 3 p.m., excuse me. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. I take the bread of life, broken for all my sin, nobody crucified. Make me whole again. I will recall the cup poured out in sacrifice to drink this sinner's end for your new covenant. Hallelujah. I'll live my life in remembrance, hallelujah, your promise I won't forget. I walk salvation's road with fear and trembling, your way born as my own. As Christ is formed in me, hallelujah, I'll live my life in remembrance, hallelujah, your promise I won't forget. I should lose my way if ever I deny your grace. Remind me of the price you paid. Hallelujah. I'll live in remembrance. You've been so, so good to me. Been so so good to me. Oh, to think where I would be if not for you, if not for you. You've been so so good to me. You've been so so good to me. Oh, to think where. Not for you, if not for you. As far as heights reach from the depths, as far as east is from the west, so far your grace has carried me. Until I see you face to face, until at last I've won my race, remind me you're not finished yet. Beautiful, Daryl. I was thinking, what a what a great word in the in the, that song that we we live our lives in remembrance of Him. You know, we we remember Him tonight in our communion time, but it's bigger than that. It's yes. really a whole life. Yes, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a daily endeavor. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're called to do—to live our life in remembrance of Him, and and that remembrance really brings us 
gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts. Um, you know, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And, and so it was no accident that Jesus was crucified during the Passover when the Jews celebrated their deliverance from slavery in Egypt by sacrificing the Passover lamb. And in the upper room with his disciples on that night in which he was betrayed, Jesus said he earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In that upper room, you remember, he also washed the disciples' feet in an act of forgiveness and love. Um, And he gave a new commandment that just as he loved them, so they were to love one another. And that love really was going to be the proof uh, that they were his disciples. Um, And then Jesus, um, during that, that Passover celebration, instituted a new kind of ritual of remembrance that we call the Lord's Supper or Communion or Eucharist. And I just want to read the passage uh, from the upper room uh, that night, beginning in, uh, in Matthew 26 and verse 26. Um, it says, Now as they were eating, that would be the Passover, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So, you know, as we celebrate communion, we, we uh, have here tonight a matzo or unleavened bread just as they would have used. And, uh, and I always think it's interesting the way a matzo is, is designed um, because it's, it's a reminder of Christ's broken body. Um, Isaiah 5, uh, 53 verse 5 says that uh, uh, in a prediction of Jesus says that he was pierced through for our transgressions. And he was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment for our peace was laid upon him. And with his wounds we were healed. And, and every time I view a matzo at, at communion, I, I, I see the little indentations. And I think of the, the piercings of Jesus for our transgressions, for my transgressions. And, and, and as we break the bread, you know, I think of his body being, being crushed uh, for my iniquities. And, and as I view the, it, there's always a, a browning on the top. I, I, it reminds me of the wounds of Jesus by which spiritual healing was brought to my heart. So as Daryl and I share communion t- together tonight, uh, we want to encourage you to share this with us. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a, a silent word of prayer here and, uh, and pray over the bread and then partake together. But I'm going to ask you at home, um, you know, the head of the household there, whether it be a husband and father or a single mom or, or an individual, um, would you just say a prayer of thanks to Jesus for his body that was given for you as well? So let's do that right now. Amen. So, Daryl, we'll share with you <laughs> some communion here. And uh, if you'll take your bread at home as well, and, uh, and let's, let's eat this together in remembrance of the Lord. Well, in the upper room uh, that night, they continued, Jesus continued by saying, and he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom." And so we, we also remember tonight not only the body of Jesus that was broken for us, but we remember the blood. You know, the scripture says that the life is in the blood. That it represents the life. And, uh, and that his blood was shed to wash our sin away and make it white as snow. So again, we'll have a word of prayer and we'll ask you at home 
uh, someone who can lead to just uh, have a word of prayer of, of thanks uh, for Jesus' blood that was shed for us tonight. Amen. So we'll ask you to, to take up uh, your grape juice or the equivalent as we are here and, and as we remember the Lord and, and the blood that was shed for us. Let's drink together. Something special about remembering the Lord, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, what, what, what are your thoughts, Daryl, when we partake in communion? You know, what, what, where does your mind go? <laughs> the, um, this whole set of passages um, remind me of, of how many opportunities Christ gives us. Hmm. And so many times it was in threes. And... Hmm. Uh, where we would mess up in, in Peter's case, you know, he, he said, you'll, you'll deny me three times. Mm -hmm. And he did. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, even though Peter also was of the boldest and bravest <laughs> uh, at the time of uh, the crucial time, he uh, was not so much. Yeah. So it reminds me of the, of the humanity. We, we think of these as being ultra people. Mm -hmm. And they're they're sinners like us. They are <laughs> weak <laughs> like us. They are fearful like us. Yeah. And um, and the beautiful thing is, uh, you know, at the end of uh, the Gospel of John, uh, when Jesus is walking along the shore and reinstating Peter, and um, what, what did he say to Peter? He yeah. asked him three times, uh, "Feed my fish." You know. Yeah. You know? Do you, Do love, you love me? me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the response is, feed my fish, you know. Yeah. And, and um, he knew Peter loved him, even in his denial of him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak, yes, just like you said. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I mean, and even in the midst of all of this, and in, in, in the passage, too, continues in the garden before he was arrested, and... Um, uh, Someone slices the ear of, mm -hmm. uh, of a servant, of a Pharisee, and... And, uh, and it and was Peter. It was <laughs> Peter. And he, Jesus, rebuked his followers, his disciples, and healed the man. Mm. Um, all at the same time. Mm. So, reminds me of the discipline also he has for us, uh, because his intentions are so pure. Yeah. And his heart, even for that man, and, and later his words on the cross, Father, forgive, forgive them. them. The people that were nailing him to the cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's powerful. It is. Well, we appreciate uh, the music tonight, and I think you've got a song to close us out with. Yes, huh? thank you. Okay. <laughs> When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. See from his hand, his hands, his feet. Sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er 
such love and sorrow meet. O thorns compose so rich a crown. O the wonderful cross, O the wonderful cross, bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace from here and bless your name. the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small the so amazing so divine demands my soul, my life, my all. Demands my soul, my life, my all. Wow, what powerful words. Mm -hmm. I hope we've encouraged you tonight and brought you closer to the in fellowship to Jesus uh, as we have been with you and uh, and uh, I hope that uh, you know that we'll take that seriously that his love demands my life and my all. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're so glad you could be with us. Have a good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.